Going to move straight on to uh, the business news uh, for you now in the program, where the strike that has affected uh, the US's big three automakers could spill over to the other side of the border in Canada. Our business editor, Sean Pellegrin, is here. He's going to tell us uh, more about it, Sean. That's right, Stuart. Workers at Ford's uh, Canadian sites have threatened to go on strike. Uh, at this as their existing labor contracts uh, lapsed at midnight uh, local time on Monday. Uh, 5,700 5, workers would be involved. Uh, the Unifor Union, uh, leading negotiations with Ford. Uh, they've said that while the previous agreement has expired, contract negotiations have been extended uh, for another 24 hours. Uh, the union has described the talks as constructive, but not enough progress has been made on key demands such as wage increases and pensions. The union's members represent only a fraction of Ford's workforce, but they operate on an array of different plants, including some that make engines for some of the brand's best-selling trucks, which could have an outsized impact if industrial action does ensue. Well, meanwhile, south of the border in the U.S., the United Auto Workers Union has threatened to expand the strike it started last week against uh, three sites belonging to General Motors, Ford and Stellantis. The first four days of picketing have led to a tense back and forth between the union and Stellantis, specifically over a proposal made by uh, Chrysler's parent company last week that could have potentially led to the closure of 18 different U.S. sites. The UAW's president has said that a new list of plant targets would be released on Friday at noon if the companies don't move along enough on their proposals. Well, the UAW strike, uh, the first in history to target all major three automakers at once, is a representative of a rising labor movement in the U.S., spurred on by the rise in cost of living. To date, in 2023, the U.S. has seen 7.4 million labor hours lost, with 4.1 million of those taking place just in August, the most in a single month since August of 2000. As a point of comparison, just 636 hours uh, were lost in total for the same period in 2022. The strike does expand to include all of the UAW's members. As some analysts could see the industrial action lead to a 1.7% drop in GDP over the quarter. Well, let's take a look at what's happening on the stock markets uh, this hour in uh, Europe at the Euro at the open. All shares uh, trading lower across the major bourses. You can see uh, trading higher across the major bourses with the DAX in Frankfurt. Uh, I, I think these 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 uh, figures are actually wrong. This is, they're supposed to be all down. Uh, apologies for that mistake. Investors awaiting the U.S. Federal Reserve meeting on Wednesday, where it's widely expected that the central bank will hold rates. Uh, steady. Let's move on to have a look at a quick look at the oil markets now and how they're doing. Uh, crude prices rising on the back of these extended Russian and Saudi uh, supply cuts, but also on the back of positive data uh, regarding Chinese manufacturing released recently. Uh, crude prices slowly going towards that $100 a barrel mark. You can see the Brent crude close to $95 a barrel. And the West Texas Intermediate just over a $92 a barrel. Well, let's head to uh, Beijing now, where the EU's uh, commission, the EU Commission's digital chief, held uh, discussions with Chinese authorities over critical issues such as artificial intelligence and data governance. Vera Urova uh, shared the concerns of European firms about the uh, so-called murkiness of Chinese laws and the difficulty to abide by them. Beijing has implemented expansive new regulations recently covering cybersecurity, counterespionage, and data management citing the need to shore up national security measures. Take a listen. Uh, first thing is uh, a not very clear wording of the laws, uh, especially missing definitions of, for instance, what's important data and what uh, might be uh, the, the difficulty uh, which, from the perspective of the law, uh, which uh, the companies could be confronted with when transferring the data outside. Uh, so it's uh, a lack of clarity, uh, then uh, long processes uh, which the companies have to undergo, uh, although there are deadlines, I think it's 45 days for, for one process, uh, it lasts uh, very often much longer time, and as we know, time is money, and uh, also in China, I guess. 
And let's finish with some concerning news for those of us who uh, cook or uh, dress their dishes with olive oil. A major drought in the Mediterranean has led to a record spike in olive oil prices. A new report by the U.S. Department of Agriculture shows that prices for uh, olive oil surged over $8,900 per ton in September. Uh, prices had already increased 130% compared to the previous year in August. Uh, the world's largest producer, Spain, has experienced its third hottest summer uh, and been afflict afflicted with a dramatically low level of rainfall, leading to 50% uh, cuts in production in the last harvest. The spike in prices has also led uh, to an increase in olive oil theft. 50,000 liters of oil was stolen from one particular mill in late August. That's about $420,000 euros worth of olive oil, Stuart. It's an amazing amount, isn't it? I bought myself a great big new bottle just the other day, and it is an awful lot of money. It's incredible how much it costs.